Hey everyone, it's Tim from TimGuiner.com and I'm here to create a new type of tips and tricks video to help you with your painting. Usually you'll see me on YouTube here creating various tips and tricks videos, helping you with different types of brush techniques or framing or varnishing your paintings. Um, but for this, I'm gonna create a whole series of episodes and uh, they're gonna help you out with a very specific thing. I think I'm gonna call these episodes, What's that, that color? Have you ever been painting and you're just, you know, trying to match a color, you're looking at, um, well, you're looking at a person or you're looking at the sky or the grass and you're trying to get that right green or that right skin tone and you're just like, what color is that? I cannot get that color. Well, what I'm gonna do is show you uh, a way to try to help you learn how to get you know colors that are close or, or match them right on. And uh, I'm gonna try to create as many episodes of this as I can, try to do it a couple times a month, and eventually, uh, a few years from now, we'll have pretty much everything covered, right? You know, we won't have any, uh, any stone unturned. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just show you how uh, a good way that you can go outside or um, sit in your studio and try to match up some of your colors. The first thing you're gonna need is some drawing paper cut into squares. And uh, for this episode, episode one, what we're gonna do is match up a blue sky. Uh, a lot of times people's blue sky is too purple or too blue or too uh, gray. So what we're trying to do is find out what color, if I were to take um, all the blue tubes of paint that I have, put them on my palette, what color should I use to do a blue sky? And that's what these episodes are going to be designed to help you with, is pick out a tube of paint and know that you can start with that tube of paint to reach the color that you're looking for. A lot of times, you know, there's, you look at, uh, you go to the art store and you look at the variety of paint on the wall and you're like, what color do I pick? What blue do I want? I really want to paint skies, but what blue color should I pick? Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over how you can create um, your own little color swatches to match up your colors out in nature, in the studio, uh, or what have you. So first thing you need to do is take some drawing paper and cut it into squares. Um, and then we're gonna take our blue paint. I've got seven tubes of blue paint that I'm gonna use for this video. But you, if you have more tubes of blue paint, you'll see what we're gonna do here. Um, but you can make as many squares as you want. And what's neat is you can keep these forever and match up your color. But I'll show you what I do, and then we'll talk about that a little bit more on how to use these uh, down the road. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in here to uh, my desk, or a little table here, and show you first step in matching your colors to figure out what color is that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my really high quality palette here, um, also known as a paper plate, and I've got a brush, which is clean, and I've got my paint down here next to me, um, which I'll be switching between as we go through the video. Uh, and I've got, I'm gonna start out with cerulean blue. I've got a pen, and I've got my little cutouts here of paper. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is, the reason why I'm using white is because most of the times, um, the paint right out of the tube is gonna be too dark to really match up your sky. So I'm just gonna add white to each blue mixture that I have to kind of get the value a little bit closer to sky color. So just titanium white, it's fluid titanium white. If you wanna see what I'm using, uh, I've got golden titanium white. And this lesson is for acrylics. Uh, I will do the same thing that we're doing here with, with oils, uh, but I'm starting out with acrylics. So, uh, so watch for the oil video down the road here in a little bit. What I'm gonna do is take my first color swatch. I'm gonna take some of my cerulean blue. You really don't need that much. You don't wanna waste your paint. Anyway, it's not a waste because this stuff's very helpful, but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna take some cerulean blue, just a little bit of white to get that value you know, to a mid-tone. And all I'm gonna do is take 
and I don't really want to get paint on the back of it, but it doesn't matter. And just paint in my color swatch. Doesn't have to be completely covered, but I like to get it completely covered. That way I don't see any white, but you'll get the point uh, when we go outside and match up our colors. So just take and paint this as solid as you can with your cerulean blue mixture. Try to brush it as much as you can so there's not a whole lot of brush strokes because the, what the brush strokes do is it changes the value a little bit. You'll get uh, parts of the paint that kind of build up in certain areas that will look a little bit darker. So try to get it you know, even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it as even as you can. And then what we're going to do is just take, flip it over. You can wait for it to dry if you want to, but we're just going to flip it over and we're going to write cerulean blue on the background, on the back of it. Okay, I probably should have wrote it first. That's what I'm going to do from now on is write it first. It makes it so much easier. One of those learn as you go things as I make these videos. All right, so I'm just gonna touch up this little area. Okay, so that's my cerulean blue swatch, and I'm just gonna put this down over here and let it dry. Okay, for my next color, I'm gonna do ultramarine blue. Okay, and you can tell I'm an artist because I have horrible penmanship. I don't know if that's true, I just made that up. All right, but you want to make sure your brush is really clean. So make sure that you've cleaned it off really well because you don't want to have any mix of cerulean blue with your ultramarine blue. And again, we're going to take some white ultramarine blue, make a mid-tone, try to get a similar value. And for those of you who are really new to painting, value just means the brightness the lightness of your paint. So we'll take the ultramarine blue, make a mess on my hands. All right, fill that in. Fill the fingers in a little bit. Okay, there, ultramarine blue. And I'll put that to the side. Okay, and then for my next one, I have brilliant blue, which you might not have this color, but what you, the idea is to take the colors that you have and do all of these swatches and go from there. So if you don't have brilliant blue, that's fine. It's made by Liquitex. It's a great color. But again, we're going to create this mid-tone brilliant blue. And just paint in my swatch, fling it all over the place. You can wear gloves when you do this or just paint it on a table flat like this. I prefer to have the artist look with paint all over my hands. Okay, so that's a brilliant blue swatch. Okay, then I put that to the side, then grab another one, and I'm going to show you just one more here, because you get the idea. Okay, I'm just going to take one more and do one more for you, and this one's going to be cobalt blue. I tried to do the three major blues, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and ultramarine blue. Fallow blue is one of the more popular ones too, so you can do that as well. Uh, but I'm just going to show you one more, because you get the idea. We'll just take the cobalt blue, again make a mid-tone color, okay, and then paint in my swatch, try to get it nice and solid. Ok, 
Okay, and then put that to the side and let it dry. Okay, so what you want to do now is just continue with whatever blue colors you have, whether you have um, a light permanent blue or, like I said, phthalo blue, um, different blue shades, cerulean blue red, cerulean blue green shade, um, phthalo blue red shade, you know, all those types of things. You can, you can do as many of these as you want, uh, but you get the idea you want to cut out these little pieces of paper. And I use a thick stock uh, drawing paper for this. It's almost like a poster board. You can use poster board or you can mat use map board as well. Uh, but the idea is to create a mid-tone blue and paint all of your swatches. There's a bunch more steps, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. But what I want to do now is take these colors outside and let's match it up with the sky. So here we are outside. Uh, it's a nice bright blue sky. There's no clouds. So it's perfect for us to test our colors to see how close these colors match right out of the tube to the sky. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of angle the camera up to the sky with my color swatches, and uh, we're gonna see how close they are, and then we'll make adjustments from there. Okay, so let's test out these colors. The first one I've got here is light blue permanent, and you can see it's not very close. Um, it's way too blue, the sky behind is a lot more kind of purplish actually so light blue permanent isn't a match next we got brilliant blue let's see here brilliant blue nope not even close either it's much more blue and not quite the color we're looking for for our sky next one we have is ultramarine blue and that is very close that's a much more closer color to the sky so ultramarine blue i'm going to mark that as close next i've got cerulean blue which isn't a match but it's not horribly off it's it's a little too blue but that might be a good color to mix with something so we'll call that uh, it's not a match but it's not close it's in the middle somewhere okay next we have cobalt blue and cobalt blue, depending on where the sun is hitting it on this thing here, on the swatch, is actually kind of close. So we'll put that one as a close. We'll stack that with the ultramarine blue. Next we've got cerulean blue deep. And that is much more gray and less purple, and that's not a close match. And finally we have light blue violet, which isn't a match but it's not horribly off uh, you know if you have the shadow hitting it here it's pretty close but um, we'll mark that as in the middle as well so those are all the tubes i did for now what we want to do now is go back into the studio and see if we can make a few adjustments to these to see if we can get them a little bit closer okay next what i'm going to do is take uh, my color swatches that were close we've got these three which were cobalt blue ultramarine blue and light blue violet uh, and a lot of times the sky is more gray uh, or it has a gray tint to it um, and that makes it harder to match because it's got this grayish hue to it so um, it's not really a, a color that's right out of the tube you gotta mix your color a little bit to get closer to the sky color um, so what I'm gonna do is take raw umber which is kind of a it's a grayish brown color and i'm going to mix that in and make a um, ultramarine blue raw umber mix and we're going to do it for all three and see if we can get it closer to the sky color so let's start with ultramarine blue i'm going to put my color swatch here just so i can kind of gauge the difference i'm going to take my ultramarine blue a tiny bit of raw umber you only need a little bit to gray it out and then some of my white Okay, and then I'm going to take that color right on the back, ultramarine blue and raw umber. OK, 
Okay, and I'll put this one to the side and let it dry a little bit. Next, I've got my light blue violet. And now, this one I'm going to approach a little bit different. I'm not going to add raw umber because light blue violet kind of already has a grayish aspect to it. So what I'm going to do is take ultramarine blue and mix with my light blue violet. Add a little white just to uh, lighten it up, get the value close. Okay, so we're taking those two colors. There's ultramarine blue, light blue, violet. And making another color swatch. Okay, so put those two aside. Then I've got my cobalt blue. Okay, we've got my cobalt blue. This time a little raw umber mixed in with that. Some white. So you can see I don't really put a whole lot of raw umber, just a little bit. Okay, and we'll let that sit and dry, and we'll put these two aside. And now our next step is to go back outside and test it again. Okay, we're back outside here, and the first one, first one I'm gonna show is light blue violet in ultramarine blue. And that's a pretty close color, um, depending on how you hold it. I mean, the it's a little bit more blue, not quite as gray. So maybe if you were to take a little raw umber and add to that, it'd be pretty close. This one's cobalt blue and raw umber. Again, pretty close. Not quite a match, um, but close, and it would work in your sky. And the last one is ultramarine blue and raw umber. And this one, color-wise, is a very close match. Uh, it's hard to see sometimes with the shine, the sheen of the paint on the camera, but holding it up here, uh, it's a very, very close match to a very brilliant blue sky. Obviously the values are going to be different um, as you get closer to the horizon, it gets lighter, and as you get further up, it's, it's much more dark. So this, for color-wise, matches up very, very close. So you could just add more white as you went closer to the horizon. Um, and actually, the horizon we'll talk about in another video of what's that color, and we'll match that up as well. So what we came up with today is that the sky on a two o'clock afternoon in northern Maine is ultramarine blue and raw umber mixed with a little bit of white. Um, but that's not always the case. It depends on what time of day it is, uh, where you are, your elevation, everything. How many clouds are in the sky, uh, which point the sun is in the sky, is it opposite you? Um, so the real goal for your sky color is to make one of these. And that is you've got color swatches of your actual paint right here with all the mixtures on the back that you can put on a nice little piece of framing wire um, or a carabiner or something like that, keychain, and you've got these handy that you can take with you, really portable, and you can go out in the field or you can sit in the studio and eye it up, look to see, hey, did I match this color right? This is the process you wanna to do to find out what's that color. You wanna make color swatches, do some mixtures. You can do many more than this. I have about 10 here, but I could easily do 30 or 40. So if you're bored someday, um, and you just want to do something related to painting, but you don't really have time to do a whole painting or you don't feel like working on a whole painting, make one of these and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when you're having a hard time figuring out what color do I need to use to create a good match for what I'm looking at. So that's the first episode of my new series, What's That Color? And remember, it's more about just making color swatches for yourself so you can take them out go out in the field, eventually you'll be like, you won't even need this. You'll be like, oh, I already know what color that is. So, uh, but it's a really cool tool 
to use when you're out painting and to try to make sure that you're getting your colors really close. Remember, it always doesn't have to be a perfect match, but if you get it very close, then you can mess around with values and different shades and get it really spot on. If you have any questions, make sure you visit my website, www.timgonyer.com. I'll have a link down below in the description on YouTube and up above in Facebook. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.